Uh, okay, any other comments about that? I do have some other things that I want to talk to you about. And one of them is recent polling about COVID and the vaccine. And, well, I'll just show it to you. I, I haven't uh, read through the whole thing, but I would just, just again, dismayed. And in fact, I will tell you, I went to I went to my doctor yesterday, just a regular checkup, no, no big deal. And he doesn't follow politics at all. He is focused on medicine and he tries to stay clear of uh, mainstream madness. He does, um, I need to change that followed logo. That's still a Halloween icon there. Sorry about that, <laughs> but thank you for the follow. Uh, he was he was asking me, what is the deal with all of the anti-vaxxers? He's I don't get it. He, you know, when we were talking, he's like, normally there's always going to be a small minority who believes that. He says, but I talk, I have so many patients who I cannot convince to get the vaccine because they are so convinced that it is somehow a hoax. And he's like, what is up with that? And, I, you know, I don't. I don't claim to know the answer. I suspect it has to do with uh, certain leaders um, creating a distrust. And, and I think both parties have been doing this, but really over the last four years, more than we've ever seen, uh, creating an absolute distrust for government and also saying that there's only one fountain of truth in the country none other and anything else. You can't trust anything in the media. And I also think that there has been, and, and much of it is deserved, a lack of trust for big pharma, right? So you add all of those things together and then you add the politics into it. It, it, uh, it really turns into a political choice and not a medical choice. And he's like, I'm just a doctor trying to get them to save their lives, just like I tell them that they should get a colonoscopy when they hit a certain age. Or, you know, he's like, I swore to do to do no harm. I'm not going to recommend something that I don't believe in. And he's like, and then they tell me what their source is, and it's some social media post or some right wing talk pundit. And he's like, you're going to believe that person? Oh, I, I went to medical school. I, I went into all kinds of debt so that I could actually learn medicine and, and treat and diagnose. And you're going to believe some social media post? He's like, it's just, I, he says, I've never seen anything like it. And it's incredibly frustrating. And I know that doctors are around, around the globe are facing this. And I tell him, I said, doctor, it's because you're paid off by big pharma. <laughs> and he's like, well, I wish that you would, uh, you know, you could show me in my bank account. I, I'm wondering when that check from big pharma is going to arrive. And uh, so he was just expressing his frustration. Well, now we have some kind of numbers behind that frustration. This is uh, a recent poll. This is from Yahoo News. 28% of Americans surveyed believe that the truth about harmful effects of vaccines is being deliberately hidden from the public. The results of a new poll shared exclusively with Yahoo News finds that 28% of U.S. adults believe without evidence that the truth about harmful effects of vaccines are being deliberately hidden. The findings are part of a global research conducted by the U, UGov Cambridge Globalism Project, which looks at how different countries perceive a variety of conspiracy theories. According to the research, at least one-fifth to two-thirds of respondents said they were convinced that the truth about vaccines was being withheld from the public. And that's in 20 of 23 countries surveyed. So this is not just here in the United States. And there's a picture of uh, anti-vaccine protests. Taken together, these findings emphasize the extent to which conspiracy conspiracism has entered the mainstream politics of numerous electorates around the world. The same research also points to a new and deeper form of partisan antith antipathy where people are divided not merely by political preference or political identity, but also by their fundamental perceptions of reality. 
Overall, 43% of adults surveyed in the U.S. said they did not believe that the harmful effects of vaccines were being withheld from the public. A closer look at the breakdown of responses within the U.S. shows that attitudes towards vaccines are clearly divided along partisan lines. Just 9% of people who voted for President Biden in the last election said they believe the public is being misled about the dangers of vaccines, while 47% of Donald Trump voters said they believe this to be true. What is so maddening about that for me is that the vaccine was pushed through by a Republican and that the Republican Party should be claiming credit for saving hundreds of millions of lives right now. But they can't. They can't. <laughs> it's, it, when have you ever seen such a resounding success from a Republican president that cannot be celebrated and screamed from the rooftops? Have you ever seen anything like this? And that president, by the way, has gotten a vaccine. He did it in private, but he got the vaccine after he got COVID and said he was immune. He got the vaccine. Uh, it is, I've never seen anything like this. I was talking to somebody. I won't tell you who it is. I will reveal it later on. But I've been having some high-level discussions with uh, other uh, people who are running for office or who are in office. And uh, I was having this conversation with him. Like, Can you believe we live in a world where a Republican president during a pandemic fast tracks a vaccine, can clearly take credit for the vaccine that is saving hundreds of millions of lives and the Republicans cannot take credit for it because it has been so poorly handled and so politicized? I mean, it's madness. It is absolute madness. Republicans should be going around screaming from the rooftops that they have single-handedly saved us from the pandemic, but they can't. How did that happen? It's bizarre. It is bizarre. I just, uh, <laughs> it's really unbelievable. Uh, <laughs> I just, uh. Uh, let's see here. Uh, this is back to Podbean. 100 Yard says, it's not that we are convinced it's a hoax. It's that they rolled it out super fast and they are pushing it on us and our kids. And let's avoid the, uh, the uh, expletives if we can, if you don't mind, just for my benefit. Um, it, uh, what I have, if you're just new here, I have gone through great lengths to explain to you why and how this can come out so fast. And when you look at it in the grand scheme of things, it makes sense why it came out so fast. They did not cut any corners. And the reality is, as science gets better, it should move faster. Remember when DNA te tests used to take uh, months and months and months? And now we can get DNA tests fairly quickly. Does that mean the DNA tests are not as accurate as the ones that took months and months and months? No, it just means science adds on itself. It improves itself. What to me is much harder to believe is that the government and the pharmaceutical companies would push forward a vaccine that they know, and that's what these survey respondents are saying, that they know is dangerous. And the people who, who comment here on a regular basis believe is killing more people than it is saving. And somehow that is not going to be noticed. That Big Pharma is so determined to make a short-term gain that they are willing to kill millions of people to get it and they just believe that it's never going to be found out. And of course, what people will bring up is, well, that's what happened with cigarettes. Cigarettes are totally different. The, the regulations and the requirements in every single country to get through the vaccine uh, requirements, it, it, they're astronomical. And the regulations that are there. And I don't, I don't know if you realize this, but each country came to the conclusion on their own. You remember that the UK approved the distribution of the virus weeks before we did. Why? 
Well, they're epidemiologists. They're equivalent to the CDC. They looked at all the testing. They did all the research and they determined three weeks ahead of us that it was okay. We waited a little bit longer. It's all to say that each country is going through this, this scrutiny to make sure that these things are safe and effective. This is incredibly regulated. And the idea that somehow government officials and, uh, and big pharma is just for like this one big wham, bam, let's kill millions and millions of people for an instant profit is to believe that's what's going on? That's the unbelievable, not that they fast-tracked a vaccine in three years. The unbelievable is that all the world powers know that this thing is killing people. Big Pharma knows that it's killing people and children. And they're letting it happen. <laughs> That's the unbelievable here. I mean, it's just remarkable. To think that, you know, where Big Pharma is going to make its money is not in producing a vaccine that, that kills people and is forced upon you. They'll make money off of everybody getting the vaccine and then booster shots. So what they want, if it's a conspiracy, is something that, so ideal conspiracy uh, uh, concoction here would be a vaccine that protects people, but only for a certain amount of time. And then they have to get boosters. So it's effective. It needs to be effective. You can't run this long-term gain. And you certainly can't survive if you just decided, oh, to hell with it. Let's just kill millions of people so that we can get our money right now. <laughs> and nobody will ever find out. Stop it. <laughs> That's the unbelievable. And by the way, somebody asked me, we had, uh, I don't think we'll ever see him on this program again, but many of you remember a few nights ago when we went off the rails, we went down the rabbit hole really early. We had a gentleman who said that he was going to bury me in evidence that the vaccines were not working. Do you remember this? And I invited him to bury me in evidence. Uh, what he buried me in was nonsense. He, first of all, presented a bunch of doctors who were talking about how the vaccines are a hoax. It, upon further evidence, first of all, none of the doctors shared any corroborating evidence. And not only that, not medical doctors, an economist and a financial analyst. So then he finally finds a doctor. Quick Google search reveals this doctor has lost his medical license, has been convicted for selling and promoting his own medicines as cures to all kinds of diseases. And once again, no evidence. So this guy kept trying to bury me in nonsense. In the end, this went on. I wish I could show it to you. It all happened on Facebook. This went on for days. And I kept showing him where what he was sending me was clearly taken out of context. So many of the study he sent me actually proved the point that I was trying to make, but he was just reading headlines. And in the end, this is what he said to me. I should pull it up. I really should screenshot it, but I want to be kind to him. He said the following. I don't have evidence to prove it, but I was right about cigarettes and Nixon. And so I'm right about this and you wait in a couple of years and you will see that I am right. <laughs> this is the man who is going to bury me in evidence. So then I asked him if he had any fantasy football picks, because if he's right about Nixon and cigarettes and COVID, maybe he could be right about fantasy football. He didn't give me, uh, any, uh, any, uh, fantasy football picks, which would have been nice, but he didn't have any for me. Uh, then he tried to send me some more stuff. I clearly debunked it. And so then it went where it always goes once, once I challenge people about their evidence. And that is he resorted to just attacking me and my character. And that I'm, I'm in deep with the mainstream media 
and being paid off by Big Pharma, even though he clearly admitted to me he has no evidence, just going on a feeling. So that's what burying me in evidence says. Uh, this is uh, 100 Yard Alchemist says, so you're saying it's unbelievable that the government would lie to us? No, I didn't say that. I'm a simple guy. What I would like is evidence that you're being lied to. And by the way, it wouldn't be just your government lying to you. It would also be Iran's government. It would also be Russia's government. It would also be Iraq's government. In fact, it would be just about every government across the globe. And then it would have to be all of their government epidemiologists. And then it would have to be all of anybody who's doing any research. They're all in on it. Now you have to go down to all the doctors, all the nurses, all the first responders, all the mortuaries, of course, I'm now not just talking about vaccine. I'm talking about the whole COVID hack hoax. Sorry, I, I expanded there. But they would all be lying to you. And, and the bigger question is, why would they be lying to you? Why? If, if this thing is killing more people than it's saving, what is the benefit to the government? That's, that's the question that remains unanswered. I understand why you would say Big Pharma is lying because they're making millions and millions of dollars. But if people are dying and it's creating all of these medical problems, that's a pretty short-term, uh, short-sighted plan. Because that's not going to last very long. And all of these conspiracy theorists that I've talked to believe that within one to two years, it's all going to come out. So that's how short-sighted the pharmaceutical companies are. They are so blinded by greed and they have everybody in their pocket. Every country across the globe is in their pocket and they don't care that it's all going to come out or they somehow think they can hide it. So, uh, you know, saying that I don't believe it, that the government can lie. Of course they can lie, but the lie, you're talking about a lie of epic proportions, a lie that doesn't serve it would be a lie perpetuated by idiots, by absolute idiots. When study after study after study across the globe and, and people who say they're hiding things, if you, you go to, we've always known the efficacy rates. We've always known the side effects. We've always known that the efficacy rates could go down. We've always, uh, and, and the minute uh, who was it? Somebody was sending me a study about um, what they did with swine flu and that the minute they saw problems, they shut down the swine flu uh, vaccine. Well, actually, it was only a couple of states that shut it down. But we did exactly the same thing with one of these vaccines. Remember, it was reported that there is a potential blood clot issue with one of the vaccines. Did the government hide that from you? They didn't hide it from you. They told you and they announced to everybody, we are putting the brakes on that vaccine until we find out what's going on. So they did more research and study. They found out it is a potential problem, but they also discovered it's identifiable and it's treatable. So now they fire up the vaccine, but when you get it, they're watching for that. So these are all, every sign and indication is that you're being told the truth. And the moment new research comes out, it's shared and they make adjustments on the fly. And people call those flip-flops. Those aren't flip-flops. That's new research, new development. But I understand if you are concerned about the vaccine because it came out so quickly, that's a legitimate concern. I My answer to you is, that this is not a new type of vaccine. We've been studying this for years. And if science is worth its salt, we should get better and faster at things. And to say, well, uh, previous vaccines took 20 years. Well, you look at that with anything and say old technology took longer than new technology. Does that mean old technology is viable 
and new technology is not, the issue of how long it takes, and I keep pounding this home, is irrelevant. Especially from people who just became epidemiologists last year. And I'm doing air quotes, epidemiologists. It's irrelevant. We could have a brand new virus come through and we could come up with a vaccine the next day. And if that vaccine works, the amount of time that it took is not relevant. What's relevant is the research, the millions of people where this has been tested, the sample sizes. That's what's relevant here. But we want to latch on to things that when you really look at it, it doesn't matter. It doesn't matter that they did it so fast. What matters is, did they cut any corners? Do you have any evidence that they cut corners? That they did fewer tests. That they ignored information. If you have evidence of that, let's see it and let's share it and let's talk about it. Um, but the amount of time itself... You know, the first thing we do is we start looking at existing medications. So right off the bat with COVID, they tried all kinds of medications and they're still trying. Ivermectin was one of them they tried. You know, it's funny about Ivermectin. I, this popped into my mind the other day. Why isn't anybody talking about hydrochloroquine anymore? You remember th that before Ivermectin, it was hydrochloroquine, remember? And Trump got it and everybody was like, this is the miracle drug. That like disappeared and now it's ivermectin. Of course, ivermectin early on, I shared with you, there were a hundred tests early on to see if ivermectin worked against COVID. And they found it does work against COVID, but you have to give it in such high amounts, it could probably kill you. So they moved on, <laughs> you know, crazy. I know, I know, crazy. Uh, let's see here. I know you guys are getting your uh, uh, messages here. Um, Let's see if I can bring up our Podbean listeners here. Uh, 100 Yard Alchemist says, I'm just a bit shell-shocked from Tus the Tuskegee. I get that, but I would suggest it's a little bit different world. And a lot has happened since then, but I understand. Um, let's see... Uh, this is the dude, Sean, joining us on Podbean. Hey, haven't seen you here. Thanks for joining us. Yeah, but they told us they told us if that was the worst problem in minimizing other side effects. It's illegally put out. No, it's not illegally put out. It went through all of the same requirements as any other vaccine, all of the same testing, and not just by us, in every country. Um, and by minimizing other side effects, I don't have any experience with them minimizing side effects. We've known early on what the potential side effects were. They were published early on. There's a QR code in the, in the paper you get when you're vaccine, vaccinated. If you scan that, it will take you to what all those potential side effects are. Um, and all of those side effects, as I've shared with you, are way lower than most of the other drugs that we take on a regular basis, like aspirin. But again, everybody became an epidemiologist in the last year and a half. Um, uh, let's get to comments here. Uh, Zom Paul joining us on Twitch. Haven't seen you here before. Thanks for joining us. Also, um, and I, you, you know, I'm just going to be honest. Some of you guys need better usernames. They're hard to read. Um, let's see. Chris Larson says, I walked past a construction site today and the worker was blasting some podcast that was anti-vax and it felt like a cult leader preaching. I don't get the draw. Uh, I understand the draw of feeling like you're in on something and nobody else is. There's power in that, right? Like I know, but nobody else does. And so I'm safe and they're not, and I'm not the sheep and they are. There's power in that. Uh, Zom Paul talking about the verdict, just saying my two cents. Uh, the verdict was fine. Frankly, judge should be punishing the plaintiff with all the misconduct, the prosecutor. Uh, Zom Paul says, uh, my mouth doesn't sync with the voice. Sometimes that can be part of the stream, but guys, let me know. 
Uh, I've made so many changes on this end. Let me know if my voice is off from the mic and I'll work on that. Oh, Daryl Sprout uh, says, uh, Jay McPharma, the lie is never anyone, everyone in on it never was, top down always was. Daryl is the one who said he was going to bury me in evidence and then said ultimately he didn't have evidence. He just believed it was true and he was right about cigarettes and Nixon. So he's right about this. So welcome back, Daryl. I thought you said you weren't going to join us anymore after you went after my character. Um, let's see. Zon Paul says, what you have is multiple doctors and institutions saying one thing and a handful of propaganda pushers and Biden administration ignoring the science and pushing their narrative. The vaccine is different. The vaccine using long strain spike protein DNA. Uh, David, uh, says they see the results for themselves. There is no secret top-down knowledge. Uh, no, um, we've dealt with all of these claims. Uh, the highly prone to mutation, health issues, myocarditis rate, astoundingly high. It's not true. It's just not true. We've debunked all of it here, and I'm not going down the rabbit hole again. If you want to send me your evidence, I'll be glad. Everybody on this show knows that if you send me the evidence, I will look at it. Uh, but we have uh, debunked and debunked and debunked over and over again. And in fact, most of the studies that people have sent me talking about how high the myocarditis rate is, misread the study. And what it actually points out is how incredibly high myocarditis is in those who've got the vaccine and how low it is, but still a, a possibility in those who have gotten vaccinated. Uh, let's see here. Uh, Zon Paul says, I need to keep up with the current info. Everybody else here knows that I read every COVID study and research that comes out. All of them. All of them. So don't tell me I need to read something. Send it to me. Uh, let's see. David says, uh, this guy reads all the studies that comes out. Thanks, David, for... Um, uh, and Daryl says, I went after your character. No, no, Daryl. I just asked for the evidence and what you kept sending me was nonsense. It was not verifiable. You were sending me experts who were doctors, who were not doctors or convicted doctors. You sent me squad douche and you admitted it. You admitted it that you just had a feeling and you couldn't prove it. And in fact, then you said the evidence has been concealed and hasn't been released yet. So please don't act like you sent me anything and don't act like I assaulted your character by asking for evidence. Uh, let's see, Zon Paul, the myocarditis rate is on the government website and released because of the issues. Many of the vaccines being banned in over 130. No, that's not true. That's not true. Send it to me, Zom. Love to see it. Love to see it. Um, <laughs> Michael says that's his other... Uh, other brother, Daryl. Yeah, we've known about the myocarditis rates. That's why they shut down the one vaccine to check it out. And uh, that should be a signal to everybody that they are watching as opposed to not watching. The idea that they are ignoring these things for some grand scheme. I don't know what that grand scheme is. Um, to me is not based upon uh, fact or study or reality. Uh, but if you want my email, you can go to jmcfarland.com. You can contact me that way. Send it to me. I'll go round and round with you. I, I have no problem doing that. Uh, but I don't want to get too distracted here because we have dealt with that over and over again. And in fact, here is some other information that I wanted to share with you about COVID. Uh, this is, um, let's see, I'll give you the headline here. There's something neurological going on. COVID could cause depression and anxiety. This is not the depression and anxiety that comes from being, you know, because we know that a pandemic causes depression and anxiety because of fear of catching it. Uh, also being cooped up in your house all day, not having human interaction. Uh, but this is, uh, this is different. Mental health experts increasingly believe 
Haley, that's the person they're talking about, that COVID could cause depression and anxiety, even in people who've never experienced it at a clinical level before. I've seen that in my outpatients. Dr. Stephanie Collier says, researchers, she says, have looked at cell cultures and they have looked at the direct effects. We think that COVID directly infects the brain and there also could be a second indirect effect and that's inflammation of the immune response. That inflammation could be the key, according to researchers with Massachusetts General Hospital Simpson's, <coughs> that's a mouthful, research center. They're studying the effects COVID might have on certain brain cells. One of the things my lab works on is different kinds of brain cells that we grow from human cells. He and his team can then uh, can take those brain cells and test how the body's immune response might alter them. Perilous believes a so-called cytokine storm kicked off by the coronavirus can change some brain cells. They're trying to figure out which ones. Cells in the brain can respond to that inflammation and as part of that immune response probably do either release other kinds of factors in the brain or change their function in the way that may set people up for more depression. He says some studies suggest upwards of 25% of people infected with COVID could experience these mood effects and that men <coughs> could be more susceptible than women. But he cautions, we're still in the early days of understanding COVID's effect on psychology. The good news, he believes those effects are not permanent and might last six months to a year in most patients. He says, I'm incredibly optimistic about the long-term prognosis, prognosis for most people. The brain is incredibly plastic and able to heal itself. We're wired to be resilient, he says. While scientists work on those answers, Haley has found some success in a combination of talk therapy, antidepressants, depressants, and a new friend, her dog, Otto. He just makes me happy. Um, this is one of the things that I tell you about. Um, we do not fully comprehend or understand the uh, long-term effects of this illness, which is why when people say, uh, in fact, who did I see? I saw it was a state representative. I thought I flagged this, but it's not in my, in my uh, research. He said he's been trying to get COVID for months and months. His wife had it and he was trying to get it. Do you guys know who I'm talking about? Is, there, is it our state attorney general? He's like, I was trying to get it, treating it like chicken pox. And I'm like, you have no idea what the long-term impacts of this thing is. And you're trying to get it like it's catching the common cold. Like, okay, all right, it's uh, your life. Uh, Zon Paul says, heart damage causes anxiety. Uh, let's see. Daryl, are you trying to send me more information, Daryl? I went down the rabbit hole with you, and the minute you started attacking me, and the minute you admitted you didn't have anything, I was done. So I'm done, Daryl. I'm done. Uh, let's see here. Zom says, that's another problem. These organizations have been caught modifying their sites to be less complicit or to quote later and proceeding to suit them or another institution. Zom says, I've had two, two lung collapses and was immunocompromised a few years ago. I've been fine. I'm glad to hear you're doing well, Zom. Chris uh, says, uh, send Jay proof and Jay will consider it. Throw the proof with the sources in the chat. I would actually prefer that you send them, uh, you can DM me on Facebook, you can put them in the comments on YouTube. I guess that will appear in the chat. Uh, I'll have to go back and look at them afterwards. I'm not going to sit here uh, while I'm live and uh, try and do a deep dive and look at every study. But everybody listening who's been with me for a longer than a month knows that I will look at everything. And I will tell you exactly what I what I believe, and I will gladly alter my viewpoint based upon new information. Let's see. Uh, anything else? 
David says, it's already been debunked. Graphene oxide is not in the vaccine. Well, that's one of the things Daryl sent me is a list of all these things that are included in vaccines. But none of it was a list of what's included in the COVID vaccines. Just more scare tactics, more misdirection, more distraction, more whataboutism. And... Uh, it's just it's just playing on ignorance. And I know everybody became an epidemiologist in the last two years. It's frightening. It's absolutely frightening. Um, I also had this uh, that I wanted to share with you because we have absolutely talked about um, how um, lockdowns and mask wearing and uh, being home has affected all of us and our mental health. Uh, I don't want to deny that. That's an absolute truth. To me, it's not a reason to not have those things. It's a reason to recognize what happens and to try and help. And this is from the Deseret News. Uh, I found this important. How did the COVID-19 pandemic affect student performance? Utah data is sobering and concerning. Pandemic... Uh, created an academic headwind, school officials say. Darren Nielsen knows a bit about how headwinds negatively impact a runner's performance. Okay. Uh, Nielsen, state assistant superintendent of student learning and an avid runner, uses the example of a headwind to illustrate how the COVID-19 pandemic has affected student achievement in the Beehive State. There appears to be a pandemic effect on student achievement across all grades, subject areas, student groups with declines slightly larger in math compared to English language arts. We can think of the pandemic as an academic headwind. While standard test data provides insight, Nielsen urged restraint in drawing conclusions from the information because we don't have equal representation of student groups across each of these numbers sets. So. How did, pandemic, uh, how did pandemic affect student test scores? Student participation rates among the various standardized tests the state used to measure student achievement for its school accountability system dropped in 2021 compared to 2019. And many undeserved students participated, underserved, sorry, participated at lower rates than other students. State assessments were suspended in 2020 due to the pandemic, so that data is not available. Among high school juniors, 7% fewer took the ACT college admissions exam in 2021 compared to 2019. The statewide average composite score declined by 2.27, which is comparable to one month of lost instruction. The Utah Aspire Plus test administrator to students in grades 9 and 10 had the sharpest decline in participation with 10% fewer students taking it in 2021. Mathematics performance dropped 46% in 10th grade and 37% in 9th grade. English language arts performance worsened by 14% in both grades. Uh, so let's see, Representative Lowry Snow, co-chairman of the Utah Legislature's Education Interim Committee, called the data sobering and concerning. And I believe it is sobering and I believe it is concerning. I have had people use this as a reason why we shouldn't have mask mandates or lockdowns or shouldn't have brought kids home. And I don't see it as that at all. Unfortunately, in a pandemic, things happen and we need to be aware of this and we need to figure out how to catch kids up if we can. Uh, but the idea that you can protect them against every eventuality and focus only on their education, no matter what's happening outside of that is not, is not reasonable. And so I see this and we've talked about depression in kids. This is all stuff that we have to be aware of. We have to try and shore up against in future uh, situations like this. And we have to identify that all of our kids who are still in school have gone through something that will set them back education wise. But I also think more importantly could be a huge mental illness situation. And that it's very important that we help them learn how to cope and how to process so that, uh, so that they can turn it into what it should be. 
and that is a growing experience, a challenge that needed to be overcome. And uh, I know that our educators are working on that. Uh, so I just wanted to share with you, of course, it's not all, uh, not all good when it comes to shutdowns and those kind of things. Uh, let's see here. Zon Paul saying has already seen websites being changed. Send me evidence, my friend. I'd love to see it. Nancy Jensen saying yes. Not sure what you're saying yes to, Nancy. So hopefully you can be a little bit more specific. Let's see on Podbean. Any other questions? A uh, couple people talking to each other. Well, I'm glad you guys have each other in the chat room. Um, <laughs> if you have any comments about what we're talking about, I would be glad to share it. Okay, here we go. Pandemic is a bio attack triggered after Epstein, like with any crisis, is being manipulated by multiple fronts to push manipulate agendas from totalitarian regime shifts, economic unrest, and division of people using the same destabilization measures we employ on other governments. At this point, what separates BLM from any other extremist regime group we are created in other countries? All right. I'm glad you had a, a chance to share. I'm glad. Um but uh, I like evidence. Big fan of evidence, like evidence. And for what you're saying to be true, the entire globe has to be on the, in on this one. So is it the Illuminati? Are they getting together in some room somewhere and they're controlling every government on the planet? Is that who it is? Yeah. And governments that have no interest in partnering up with us. So Iran, China, Russia, they're all in on it, huh? That's pretty amazing. That's something. You get every, every government, every epidemiologist, every doctor, every hospital, every research organization, all of them, they're all in on this one. It's amazing. It's unbelievable. That is something. That is something. Uh, one other study I wanted to share with you here, and then we can go down the rabbit hole if you want. Uh, this is Pfizer's COVID vaccine was 100% effective in kids in longer term study. Pfizer and BioNTech announced Monday that their COVID-19 vaccine was 100% efficacious in preventing infections in 12 to 15 year olds measured from seven days to four months after administration of the second dose of the vaccine. Company said the new data, a longer term analysis of a phase three trial conducted in 2200 patients will form the basis of an application to the Food and Drug Administration for an extension of their COVID-19 vaccine license to cover use in the age group. These are the first and only disclosed longer term data demonstrating the safety and efficacy of a COVID-19 vaccine in individuals 12 to 15 years of age. The growing body of data we have compiled from clinical trials and real world, real world surveillance to date strengthen the base of evidence supporting the strong efficacy and favorable safety profile of our COVID-19 vaccine across adolescent and adult populations. So interesting, a lot, a lot more studies need to be done, but I just wanted to share that one with you as well. Um, this is on uh, Podbean. I don't, I'm not going to try, tell me what your username is so I don't mess it up. He says the World Bank. So the World Bank is the one who is controlling all, all nations, all governments. Seer. Okay, I can see that. That makes sense. Um, the World Bank. They, they have everybody in their pocket. All doctors, all epidemiologists. They got them all. Everybody. That's pretty cool. Uh, debt is the is the control. Yeah. So where where, where are they meeting? And uh, oh, and what is your what is your evidence? Uh, Zom says actually it's multiple banks and companies: BlackRock, Dupont, Vanguard. Yeah, they're controlling the entire globe right now. Uh, Nancy, uh, going back to the verdict, do you agree with the verdict? Yes, I do. It's not perfect, but what can I say? Jay, do you have a nighttime show now? Uh, so I do this live on Tuesday and Thursday nights. Thank you for asking at 9.30 p.m. 
and it is live so that we can take your live comments. And then if you follow me on Facebook, YouTube, Podbean, you also know that I release pre-recorded content throughout the week. But I love to have this live, uh, live opportunity. The Survivalist of Zion joining us on Twitch. Hello, thank you for joining us. Haven't seen you here before, uh, but thank you for saying hello. Um, uh, he says, I know a really good ver video that goes really far in the Rittenhouse verdict I'd recommend. Post the link so everybody can see it. 